Now to Ukraine, where heavy fighting continues as Russia tries to advance in the eastern Kharkiv region. Russia's trying to change the shape of the battlefield as those billions in new U.S. aid begin to arrive. Last week, the Pentagon said the first installments included air defense, artillery rounds, armored vehicles, and anti-tank weapons. Nick Payton Walsh has more on what the battle looks like right now from the front lines. Dusk begins a race to hide before dark. It's this drone unit's first night in a new location. What? The twilight, a tiny window when perhaps you can unpack, set up without the Russian drones that are always, always above, seeing you as clearly. Like so much in this fast changing war, their task was unimaginable when Moscow invaded. Their target is on the horizon, Russia itself, into which they fly and plant mines on key roads. They wait for dark. Those lights twinkling over there on the horizon, that's Belgorod, Russia. How close they're operating towards Russian mainland. Putin's latest offensive towards Kharkiv has made the fight personal for Artyom. His parents live about a five minute drive away and fighting for his literal home is unsettling. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> And now, for the first of many times, their only defence is to listen for drones. It passes. Now it is dark, they must hurry. Russian drones have thermal cameras. They hear another. Battles raging nearby may help them go unnoticed. They resume. Any strike could also ignite the two mines they're fitting. They hear another drone. over two years into the war to now see Ukrainians flying drones of explosive straight into Russia. Inside, Sasha watches it cross the border. Remarkably, when Russian jamming kicks in, the drone keeps going. Primary changed colon two. And they're able to pick the signal up again deeper inside Russia. They spot the target road they will mine, drop both payloads, and head back. A GPS problem means the drone crash lands, but they have a spare. They once, elsewhere, managed 24 sorties in one night. But they have to be spotted only once and these shells may not pass overhead. We leave, quick. Go. Lights off at first to avoid drones. The road littered with anti-tank defenses not laid out in time to hinder Russia's latest advance. And now they have only courage and ingenuity to hold back the dark. Nick, how is morale among the soldiers right now as, as the Russian attacks on Kharkiv have increased? I think it's fair to say a group like that we were with were pretty buoyed by the task they're given, feeling they can actually take the fight, as it were, back into Russia, to Russia, 
something we didn't even know indeed happened, that they were laying mines to interrupt the ability of Russia to get across its own borders. But I also think in other units we've been talking to around this area, it isn't particularly great. I think there is a sense of uh, disconcertion that there has not been adequate fortification put in place in the northern border to hold that Russian offensive that took place about a week ago back. Uh, and also that we're going to see a slow arrival potentially of Western aid into people's hands to give them the upper hand. The staggering thing, Anderson, though, is to see how drones have completely changed daily life on the front line. Pretty much every unit we've been with since we've been here in the last week, at some point we've been told to run for cover, to get away from the visibility of Russian drones flying overhead. Sometimes they simply don't even know who the drone belongs to when it hovers above them, and it's most likely Russians trying to spot targets for the intensive airstrikes, huge half-ton bombs or superior artillery. They've got more ammunition currently than the Ukrainians to bring them to bear on those positions. So it does appear, yes, in recent days that Russia's advance may have slowed. They're certainly not making the huge strides deeper <coughs> into Ukraine that perhaps they thought they might be able to. But ultimately, it is an uphill task, certainly, and it's one that may get tougher in the weeks ahead because at this stage, there are thoughts Russia may start probing in other parts around the front line rather than necessarily focusing on the areas it's already hit here north of Kharkiv. For Anderson, behind me, just we've heard explosions uh, over the night, but it's desolate here, utterly silent, lights off, Kharkiv bracing, frankly, for any potential uh, Russian uh, attacks tonight. Anderson? Nick Payton-Walsh, thank you. I appreciate you being there. Be careful.